<laughs> this is Matt Brown from East Coast 2. I'm here with Simon Fisher Becker, who's actually wearing our pin. You wore it yesterday too. I was very proud of you on that. Um, you played Darium, uh, Dorium, yes. in Doctor Who and Matt Smith's run. Uh, walk me through the process of how you were cast as Dorium. Uh, well, I just got a phone call from my agent to say that um, uh, that Andy Pryor, who's the casting director for Doctor Who, called uh, called me in, you know, and it was one afternoon, and I had to be at a church hall in central London the following morning around 11 o'clock, and they emailed me through a script, which they asked me to prepare, and by prepare they mean learn, <laughs> you see, uh, and that's what I did, so I just turned up, and uh, I was one of seven actors yeah, that they saw and I was the chosen one. <laughs> uh, how, long in, how long in makeup do you have to spend to get into the character with all that blue paint on yeah. and how did that affect your work? Um, no, I mean I was lucky because they allowed two hours for me for both makeup and costume yes. uh, because it's very straightforward. They shaved my head uh, and it was ordinary body paint blue uh, and they put on a fixing agent. The only fiddly thing with the makeup was they put a black eyeliner on the bottom of my eye, um, which actually uh, reacted with my eyes so that they got, uh, not watery as such, but they were definitely glistening. But it was because of the reaction to the eyeliner. Uh, and then when I had my body, I also had blue nail polish uh, on my fingernails. Uh, and the fixing agent was the only uncomfortable thing about it because it was very, very sticky. Otherwise, that's it, just two hours, so... That's not too bad. And it was water-based, so at the end of the day, it would come off quite easily. Great. Uh, why do you think fans really um, like Dorium, and there's such a fascination with his character? Um, I mean, I'm only judging by what people have told me when I come to conventions mm -hmm. like this one, uh, is that the fact that each story, there's something different about Dorium. And so he's multi-layered. He's like an onion, you would be the way the skins uh, and you find something more about him and plus uh, I use the phrase he has dubious morals nobody really knows whether he's good or bad you know so I think that's what the fascination is good what were your impressions of Matt Smith as a doctor and working with Matt well <clears throat> as a as a fan of Doctor Who I actually loved it. he grabbed me from Geronimo when he first said that and I thought X good well done uh, as a person when I got to meet him, I didn't realize he was actually quite shy. But once he gets to know you and he's comfortable with you, he can then be very cheeky, he's very witty. We talked a lot about football, but uh, from an actor's point of view, he was very considerate. Uh, uh, and um, considering he's the main character, uh, there were no pretensions or anything that you, that you would imagine from stories from, from other people. Uh, it was just a lovely, lovely time. Uh, you've done some of the big Finnish audio stories in the past. Uh, what were your impressions of sitting down and doing those, and is there any future plans of doing any more? It was Gary Russell who called me in to do a, a couple of uh, the big Finnish stories. And of course, again, for me, it was the excitement of actually working with actors who I used to watch as a child. Mm -hmm. you know? So there's, I'm constantly having to fight my fan so that I can behave myself, <laughs> probably. And being in a recording studio, I'm very comfortable. I'm very, I'm more at home with, and I like it very much indeed. Uh, but what I have um, experienced before Doctor Who, if I got a job, then the directors would tend to give me more direction. Now, because of Doctor Who, people assume I know what I do, and they just accept what I do. Whereas as an actor, I would like to get direction. So I am constantly having to say to people, are you happy? And they go, yep. <laughs> oh, all right, thank you. Now as an actor, what's, is there anything harder to do with the, big, the audio compared to a TV series? What I uh, find quite extraordinary is, ironically, it's more physical. Because with film and television, there's the visual as well as you using your voice. So you can get over uh, a feeling, an atmosphere, with everything you've got. Whereas in audio, you've only got your voice. So to try and get your voice to, to put over everything, you do find you act in the booth, you're moving around a lot. You know, and sometimes you know, I'll punch the air 
you know, and I can pull a muscle, ironically, <laughs> just doing an audio. You know. uh, now, I think the Big Finish audio would actually be perfect for to do a backstory on Dorium. I know they don't have the rights, but if that ever came down the road, would you definitely be interested in something like that? If it came down the road, they got the license, I'll be there at 5 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Now, you're a regular on the Doctor Who convention circuit. Um, yes. What is it like being part of that group? Well, I found I've joined a club, a very happy, jolly club. The fans are wonderful, delightful. Meeting other celebrities is fantastic as well. And so I'm, I'm, I get a bit fan-like as well when I meet people for the first time. Uh, and it's wonderful and exciting, and I consider myself very lucky. Do you find a difference between the American and the UK fan? Uh, only and the slight difference is Americans tend to be more outward and they'll come and hug you and they'll go oh you're awesome and things, whereas English fans tend to be uh, a little more reserved but then at the end of the day they'll give you a big hug you know it takes it in. now you're currently performing uh, your one man show My Dalek Has a Punk Show in the UK um, how did that come about and what's been the reaction of that and the main thing is at the conventions people have started asking me for if I have an autobiography and I never thought in a thousand days that I would ever be asked for such a thing. But um, I found coming to America in particular, uh, I would do the panels and I would be interviewed. And at a couple of uh, conventions, the interviewers didn't turn up. So I was left to be on the stage all by myself. So initially I improvised 10 or 15 minutes of stuff. And uh, and then went straight into a Q&A. But I, so the style of my Dalek as a puncture is a panel. But instead of an interviewer, there's a, uh, a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, and I start from the beginning, and I, it's, it's autobiographical in three parts. There's my Dalek and a puncture, which talks about me and my life right up to the point where I'm off at Dorian. And then there's my Dalek has another puncture, which will go on about how things have changed. And then there's Let Zygons Be Zygons, which mm -hmm. talks more about disciplining yourself <laughs> and not getting wound up, etc. So. Now, you've been an active supporter of the anti-bullying campaign. Why is that such a endearment, that campaign that you're so interested in? I was bullied intensely as a child, not only by peers, but also by teachers. And, it's, and, and um, when I think back now, but me as an adult tries to put things into perspective and it's very, very difficult. And I, it's very sad when you hear certain people can't take it uh, anymore and decide to try and commit suicide. I never got to that point. So I was, uh, there, there, there's a stubborn gene in my family and I always felt things will be better. Uh, and although I didn't seem to fit in as a child, the best thing is, has happened now with Doctor Who, of course. I belong to this fan club, and so I support anyone and just help them get through. And the only way is you have to sort it out yourself. I've seen your video on the Blink, the anti-bullying campaign. I was definitely very inspirational watching that video. I really enjoyed that. Yeah, they asked me to do that, and I thought, oh gosh, what am I going to say without sounding pompous? Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, I'll just do one take, and whatever's in my head will come out. And you that's you nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, a couple of our followers had a couple of questions. Uh, my one follower wanted to know how many cats do you have? She's seen your presentation and what are the name of your cats? Uh, we have one cat, we call him SGC, the small ginger cat. So those who've seen the cat will know why. Because this ginger cat appeared in the kitchen one day, mm -hmm. so he adopted us and we are now his man servants. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, one of our other followers, I met you at the Long Island Who last year and gave you a Dalek cupcake and she wanted to know how it tasted. I, <laughs> I didn't taste it, it went down in one gulp. <laughs> Lovely, I love cupcakes anyway. Yeah. Very nice, very grateful. And uh, lastly, do you have any upcoming projects that the US fans will be able to get to see soon? Or? Well, hopefully, um, I'm about, to, in May, I'm about to start filming a new comedy series for the BBC called Puppy Love, mm -hmm. which is very different from uh, from Doctor Who and I'm in all six episodes for that so it'll be on BBC4 in the fall and um, hopefully you'll get it over here uh, and, uh, if not on BBC America some other way. Mm -hmm. Great. Well thank you for spending time with me Simon. That's I really appreciate you spending time. And, and thank you for <laughs> interviewing me. Uh, no problem. Yeah.